One of the most critical things in a game is for players to understand and gain information relevant to the playthrough. Understanding the rules, finding clues, and using information to make educated decisions are all parts of an effective gaming experience. But how do players gain information, and what's the best way we can give it to them? Let's talk about it today on Draw 5 Move 5. Hey everyone, and welcome to the table. My name is Gabe, and this is Draw 5 Move 5, a show where we draw connections between the mechanics behind our favorite games. Mario is a classic gaming series, and one that serves as a great example of level design. Specifically, it's a fantastic example of introducing information to players. Many levels feature trails of coins that lead over chasms or towards larger caches of goodies. Item blocks with question marks contain coins or power-ups, and accidentally hitting the bricks around can sometimes reveal additional goodies. Baddies hurt to walk into, but by jumping on their heads they can be defeated. The game introduces an idea, then allows the player to explore it and learn what it means. Coins often show the easiest path to the end of the level. Question mark blocks will contain good things. Some bricks that aren't question marks have special goodies too. And jumping on baddies kills them. All of these ideas are telegraphed clearly. They are introduced using clear visual cues or via actions the player is likely to take, like jumping in various places and accidentally hitting a block or landing on an enemy. These simple ways of introducing information to the player are great examples of how designers can teach players and telegraph information to them. But how does it work so well in Mario? How are they able to so clearly get their information across to the players? They use three core principles that many games use to relay information to their players. Direct telegraphs, repetitive telegraphs, and implied telegraphs. The simplest of these methods is the direct telegraph. In this method of relaying information, the designer will, as the name implies, directly give information to the player. Though rule books are rapidly disappearing from video game cases, digital copies are often included in the game or a tutorial is used to teach mechanics in an obvious way. This method of relaying information generally relies on objective statements and information. In a video game or board game, this may include a diagram showing the function of different buttons on the controller or the names of pieces the player is likely to use. If a command or item needs further explanation, like if a label describes a button being mapped to a special ability or item, this information is also provided. It's written in an objective language, telling the player how it works and what to do to use it. In The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, for example, an item can be mapped to three different buttons on the controller, X, Y, and Z. The player will receive many items throughout the course of their adventure and need to switch between them from time to time, and the rulebook with the game explains how to attach these items to a button for easy use. Most board game rules are written in a similar fashion, but in general any game with a standard set of rules, including RPGs and TCGs, that appear to be vast and flexible in their rule sets, still use direct telegraphs to give the players information so they can play the game. The board game Mysterium, tabletop RPG Dungeons and Dragons, and trading card game Magic the Gathering all have their own rulebooks that clearly explain the base rules, despite many creative combinations and interpretive choices available throughout the course of each game once the player steps into an actual play. The rules for handing out hints in Mysterium are just as direct as the rules of combat and status conditions in Dungeons and Dragons, and the way a turn plays out in Magic the Gathering all of which is shared with direct information, just as in video games. In general, a direct telegraph should not be something the player needs to figure out or question the validity of. It's a direct line of transfer from the designer's mouth to the player's grasp of the game. Just as common but harder to do well is the repetitive telegraph. In this method, we use repeating elements, symbols, or motifs to explain something to our players so that they can come to trust that if they take a particular action involving that attribute, the intended result will occur. Going back to our Wind Waker example, the player will see certain items repeated throughout the game, as in the case with other titles in the franchise. If the player sees a pot, they know that smashing it will get them hearts, rupees, or a refill on one of their expendable items like bombs or arrows. High symbols that are raised off a wall while at first having no clear use, can later be shot with arrows to cause a change in a room or dungeon, opening a new passage or revealing a treasure chest. And this idea is reinforced by the fact that the large eye patterns tend to be the weak point for enemies in the franchise, including in Wind Waker. The game's very first boss, Goma, has a large central eye that must be slashed while within range to deal damage to the boss. All other attacks fail to penetrate its tough armored hide. And Pokemon does a great job of this. 
In all games through the sixth generation, players would see obstacles they had no way to clear. The repeated imagery of a large stone or a short tree, which was the same everywhere in the overworld, meant that when players received a terrain clearing move that allowed them to bypass it, they could remember locations they had missed and know what obstacles they could deal with from that point onward. In trading card games, certain phrases and symbols are repeated as a shorthand. This is a combination of repetitive and direct telegraphs. Using specific terms in Magic the Gathering, such as Death Touch or Life Link, across many cards means that once the player learns what these terms mean, they can understand how they work on any card with the same ruling, the same term. Colors of mana work in a similar way, as players understand that a mana symbol placed next to an ability or in a card's text indicates the cost to cast that ability or card. In Yu-Gi-Oh as well, we can see that while there are fewer keywords, monster types like Fusion, Synchro, Tuner, Xyz, and so on all have definitions that, once understood, will apply to all other monsters with the same word unless stated otherwise. The last and most difficult to pin down and understand is the implied telegraph. Giving information to a player in this way requires that rather than directly stating something or relating an idea with a catch-all symbol or keyword, the information must be given in a way that isn't obvious but that the player will either pick up on subconsciously or be able to puzzle out. In the Mario series, for example, this would be leading the player to the most optimal path using a trail of coins. In our Wind Waker example, the hookshot is an item used to traverse various locations later in the game. While the intended target is a wooden symbol on walls and in various locations, a repetitive telegraph, through experimentation or by accident, the player can learn that the hookshot can be fired at any wooden object, including trees, treasure chests, and wooden railings. This isn't something stated in the rules, not a consistent symbol, but it's a logical leap from what players already know. And there are puzzles that lead the player to make the conclusion that any wooden object may be a viable hookshot target. The other way we can think of an implied telegraph is as a clue. Information the player can use to piece together a problem and solve a puzzle. This happens frequently in video games like the Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney series and other puzzle or mystery games, but there are plenty of examples beyond the digital realm. In Dungeons & Dragons and other tabletop RPGs, the Dungeon Master's job is to manage the flow of information to the players. They'll often provide hints as to whether or not a creature in combat has resistances or vulnerabilities. Your sword didn't bite in as far as you would expect. And give descriptions of the environment meant to encourage exploration and asking questions that lead to learning new information, sometimes via the use of the player's skills. It's up to the GM to prod the players in the right direction without making things overly obvious so they can feel accomplished. And in TCGs, implied information falls less to the game designer and more so to the player interactions in-game. In, in Yu-Gi-Oh, knowing what your opponent's deck does is crucial to success in any competitive environment. While we'll talk about staying up to date on games in another video, in general, if a player knows what to expect when their opponent makes a standard opening play for their deck, but some of the cards they add to hand aren't the ones they would expect or the moves seem odd, the player can guess that their opponent may already have certain cards in their opening hand. The information has been implied. By using these tested methods of introducing information to players, designers can allow their players to understand how to play, what to expect, and what to do. If these ideas aren't executed effectively, however, there can be problems. Subverting expectations after mastering the basics is fine. Nintendo does this fairly frequently, like putting unexpected items in the question box of a Mario level, such as a hidden vine or power down like a poison mushroom, and can make for a great twist for the player. The problem is when this is done unintentionally. Ukulele is a platformer that tried to pay homage to the collectathon's past, like Banjo-Kazooie, in its style and playing. In a lot of regards, it does this well with some fairly fun dialogue and character designs. And you do collect things, that's kind of the goal. But beyond control issues, one of the game's biggest problems is its inability to accurately telegraph info to the players. The slurp state ability allows the player to eat certain objects and gain their attributes, one of which can be honey. This allows Yuka to walk up ice and other slippery slopes. Well, sometimes. See, the problem is that although the slopes often look the same, the player needs a different ability to solve them. Maybe instead of being sticky to climb up one slope, they need to charge up their spin move and perform a reptile rush to climb the path. There are multiple visual cues like this in the game that don't function the way we expect, such as glass walls that would probably break to the sonar shot ability as the other glass walls that look exactly like them do, but instead require a completely different move. The repetitive telegraph isn't working for the players because the signs aren't consistent, and this led to much player frustration after the game was released. 
The way to solve this is to make all obstacles that look alike be solvable in the same way. All breakable glass breaks to the sonar shot, all steep slopes are climbed with the slurp state, so on and so forth. While it's possible to make the same pitfalls that Ukulele and thousands of other indie impersonal games have fallen to, by telegraphing information using direct, repetitive, and implied methods, it's possible to make a clear and fun game for our players that challenges them to still seek and explore new information and develop new strategies and ways to use the tools we give them. To let our players' creativity flourish, we need to first give them solid rules and information they can trust. Thank you so much for watching. You have my humble and eternal gratitude. What did you think of the conversation? Do you think I missed any critical ways in which designers share info with players? And how do your favorite games relay information to you most often? I'd love to hear your thoughts, so let's keep this discussion rolling down in the comments. If you enjoyed the conversation and you want to hear more from me, subscribe and ding -ling that notification bell so you never miss an update. I'm putting out new videos every other week on games and gaming mechanics, and dropping a like lets me know you want to see more. My name is Gabe, this is Draw5Move5, and until next time, go have a good game.